Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella and today I have actually a very unplanned project. I just decided to make this yesterday. We're going to be making this coat rack. So for those of you who have been watching my channel, you know that I'm in the middle of making this little set on video for you. So we've already got him made and I already made the cape and I'm supposed to be making his hat and his staff for you on video, which is coming guys. I'm still in the middle of that. But yesterday I decided to stop and make this here because I had this sudden urge to do that. And I figured it would be a nice time to post it in between all of these things here because you can use this technique to do other things. This is actually old school stuff for me. I started doing um, this rustic work back in 2015, 2014, somewhere around there, when I didn't know how to work with wood. And I needed some rustic bed frames for my gnomes. So I came up with this technique here, which makes it look like we've carved something out of a log. So the height of this was designed specifically for Radagast, and I didn't do anything fancy to get that height. I just stood him there, and I could see what I needed to do. So you can make that any height that you want. You can also give it as many forks as you want and do any design. I would suggest looking on Google at other log coat racks, and you'll get some inspiration there. Um, one of the purposes, like I said, was to show you how to get this uh, look made, so you can go on to make other things. Like This is an item I made in 2015. This was before I realized I didn't need to use clay. So here's a foil frame, and then I added clay over top, which I didn't need to do, but it turned out great anyway. But you can see they have the same look to them. So there's no clay in this coat rack here, and they're both as beautiful. And I do have a blog post on this bed, by the way, if you're interested in seeing how I put that together. I'll put the link in the pinned comment below. But today we're going to tackle the coat rack. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope it gives you many ideas and gets you started on making yourself some rustic items. So let's get started. All right, so to get us started with the coat rack, we're gonna use some wire and the gauge doesn't really matter as long as you can bend it and it will hold its bend. I got these at the dollar store. I think they're called like a florist wire and they're wrapped with a paper. There's a wire underneath, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can get any wire that you have on hand and then some aluminum foil, masking tape and paper towels. And you want a cheap paper towel, nothing that's three ply. And you want something where the design disappears when it's wet because you don't want the design to show through. And I almost forgot, you are going to need some glue. And any PVA white glue will do. This is natural. You don't have to use the same brand. You can use Elmer's School Glue or anything like that. And not necessary to the project is some hot glue, but it does come in handy. To get this beautiful wood looking color, I use instant coffee. Okay, you can paint it. But if you want the same wood color that I got, then instant coffee in any brand. It doesn't matter which brand you use. If you do use an instant coffee, you have to seal it in with something. Otherwise, the instant coffee will rub off eventually. So I use a spray-on sealer, and you can use any kind that you have. And then I finished it up with a Varathane. That's not necessary. You can use one spray-on sealer by itself. But when I do these kind of things, I always do a spray sealer, and then I finish it up with a Varathane. Keep in mind that as I was making it, I was doing things on the moment. Like I didn't pre-plan anything. I didn't have um, a final look in mind. I was just going with the flow. So if I was to start all over again uh, from the beginning, I probably would do a solid bottom. I keep imagining what it would look like if it was a solid log at the bottom and it branched off at the top. I'm not complaining though. I do love it. I think it turned out absolutely fantastic for a spur of the moment project and something that didn't take very long at all. But um, with that said, if one of you do make this and you do make a solid bottom, I would love to see it. You'll have to post pictures for me and uh, show me what it looks like. So with all that said, guys, let's get started. We're going to make ourselves a little rustic coat rack. All right, so I'm going to cut three of these pieces around the same length. They don't have to be exact same length. Depends on how rustic you're going to make it all. And then we're going to wrap them in foil. And what I do first, I just put a little tape on the end. Just like that just to make it less pokey. When you roll up the wire, just make sure that the foil isn't loose, okay? Because when you put the tape on there, you don't want it to be like moving around inside. And then you just bend the bottom into any form that you want to bend it. And depending on how thick you want to make these, I'm just going to do probably this size here. Um, once, you're, once you figure it out the thickness, then you just wrap them in tape, each one individually. And you want to wrap pretty tight. So I've got my three wrapped and the bottom feet there, you can see they're a little bit thicker. 
just by adding foil. And now I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to tape these together and then I'll work on the tops because I'm not too sure yet what I want to do. I've been looking at photos here of different ones and I like them all. <laughs> so i got to figure out what do I want to do. Look at that, that one's cool. So I'm going to be adding more points at the top, but let's just get these attached first and then I can figure that out. There, that's easier. <laughs> so I'll just tape up the middle here just for now and then we'll figure out the top points. Maybe I'll add one down here. Okay, so I added foil at the top and then little bulbs of foil at the top as well. I'll do this one for you on camera. This one to show you, I just added a fourth leg just to make it more stable and I'm also thinking about making it look like a twisting thing. I just decided that now, so, but let's fill this one up first. Okay, and I'm just going to wrap it around there. And then at the top, adding a little bulb. And because these ones are just added while you're in there, and I just have tape on them right now, and they can move side to side, I don't want them to be moving, because that'll wear on the, on the material. So I'm just going to make sure when I put the tape on there, just take a little strip, start at the bottom, and just wrap up to the side. You can also use hot glue as well and just drop a little drop in there before you add your tape. Now that's solid. Okay, if you want to make a bigger bulb on top, just use a little bit of foil. And again, you can use a little bit of hot glue if you need to. Keep it in place until you get the tape on there. Okay, I added a bit of foil here, just to give it a, more of a twisty look. And a little piece up here that's going to finish off the top. So yeah, you can get very detailed with it or um, make everything symmetrical. I like the more wonky look, so that's what I'm going to do. And in the center here, because I did add that other leg, I'm just going to push some hot glue in there. And if you don't have hot glue, then use something else and just get something pushed in there. Okay, so now I'm just going to add a little bit of tape there. And you'll notice once you do this step that the whole bottom piece will feel much more stable and that's just because of the pressure in there keeping everything where where the legs are supposed to be they're not going to be wobbly or anything all right so i think we're ready for the oh i forgot my <laughs> top piece here okay now we're ready for the next step and that will be the paper towel all right, my friends, in the next clip, we're going to be adding the paper towels. I'm just going to show you real quick how I do this. And depending on what glue you're using, if it's very thick, you're going to want to water it down a little bit. Just 
ever so slightly. You don't have to measure it out. You just want to have it where it's easy enough to work with. And again, you don't need a recipe. You're just going to go by feel. And by that, I mean we're going to be attaching paper towel to our stand. So just make sure you tear all four sides and get a stack of strips like this. And you can also get smaller strips as well. So we'll take our strip and we're going to lay it on the surface of the glue and then fold the, si the dry sides together and just pull the excess glue off. Okay, and then you can open it back up and then just make sure that both sides are wet with the glue. And because these strips are so small, you can actually just use your finger to get the glue on there. And here is where you'll notice if the glue is thick, you can't really pull it off. It starts tearing the paper towel. So you just want the glue easier to work with. All right, so now this piece is ready to be applied to our stand. So I already got one piece on there. So I'm just going to lay it on and get it as smooth as possible because I want to have a smooth wood finish. If you're looking for like bark, then you'd squish it up and wrinkle it. But I want it smooth, so I'm just going to run my fingers along, make sure I get all those wrinkles out. So I think what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to let this dry because it's going to be difficult for me <laughs> to get this in all the little places when this part down here is wet because it's just going to keep sticking to my fingers. So I'll let it dry and then I'll come back and I'll do the, uh, the fork sticking out. All right, so I've had it underneath the fan for a good half an hour or so. And... Um, I can go ahead and paint it with the instant coffee now. It's dry to the touch, so I can touch it all over and nothing's sticking to me, so I can go ahead and paint it. The white that you see is is the glue still drying underneath the paper towel, and the color of the masking tape here is just the paper towel that's completely dry, and the masking tape uh, shows through. And I forgot to mention when I was building this thing, down here at the legs, I could have spent a little bit more time smoothing this area out. I had one leg, here it is, one leg that was pretty wrinkly, so what I did was take a piece like this and I folded it. One side, I had the one side sticking above the other, so that side would go down and then spread that out, and it kind of um, gave me a smoother surface there. So I could have done the rest of them, but I think they look okay. This one should be done, actually, but I'll just leave it for, for now, and we'll get on with this so I can go to bed because I'm getting pretty tired. I have a half a cup of hot water and for coffee stain I never measure like I never measure out a half a cup of water but uh, some people don't like it when I just dump things in and they don't know what I'm doing so that was a half a cup of hot water and I'll try first of all a quarter cup of the instant coffee and see what color that gives me I'm just always going by eye I never measure out anything so I never feel like you have to do that so that's pretty dark there I'll probably want to put some more though. So that was a quarter cup the first time. Let's try another quarter cup. A little less than quarter cup. And it'll fade out once it's on there as well. Okay, mix it up so there's no clumps left. That's better. I just got a softer brush. Just working out all those major streaks in there. So here we are the next morning. Everything is dry. I'm just putting a second coat on. It's got beautiful color to it. Beautiful. So last night after I turned the camera off, I had unplugged everything and I didn't want to put the camera back on. But when this was standing in front of the fan, I took a, a brush with dry, soft bristles. So that's really soft and I just went around and smoothed out that stain and it really helped take out those streaks or those extra bits of stain that are sitting on the surface kind of smooth them out
All right, so I'll let that dry in front of the fan and we'll be right back. All right, so it sat underneath the fan for about another half an hour. And now I'm just going around with a smaller brush and just doing a little bit of detail work. Just adding a shadow here and there. I love the color of this. Um, doing this coat stand has brought me back to remembering when I first started doing this kind of work and feeling so grateful that <laughs> coffee stain looks like wood and that I could do that on top of paper towel because I wanted some things to look so rustic and I didn't know how to do it with actual wood. So this just kind of opened up a whole new world for me and I was really excited about that. That color is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to stop now and we'll just set it in front of the fan for about a half an hour and we'll come back and we'll seal her in and then he can hang up his coat. Now that it's dry, I have to seal it in. Like I said in the introduction, I can't leave it with just coffee stain because it'll eventually just rub off. And all I have on hand is this high shine glaze stuff. I normally don't use this, but that's all I have today. So I'm going to use this one. All right, so I'll go outside. I'll do this bit and I'll be back in a flash. All right, so I gave it a good spray outside and it's all dried now. I've already coated the bottom with the varathane and just to make sure that I have proper coverage of that spray because like I said you can rub off the coffee stain if you just do a brush on so I'm going to do my brush on now that I've sprayed it and it's dry I'm using a very soft brush as well all right so it's done I did another coat of the varathane so that's two coats of varathane and I'm absolutely in love with it yeah and I'm happy I got it on film as well so next time I post one of my wooden things you can see how I do them so I do a lot of uh, woodwork in the gnome home using this technique so I'm just going to take some black paint and go around and just make some things stand out a little bit more like this twisty part here Alright guys, that will bring us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, got some good ideas for your own makes. And if you do make something out of this technique, I would love to see it. Post pictures on my Facebook page where the gnomes live. Or tag me on Instagram, oyella underscore crafts. Both those links will be in the pinned comment below. And now I'm going to let you go and I'm going to get back to working on the things that I'm supposed to be bringing you. Like his hat and his staff. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you super soon.